everyone, uh, welcome to my new video tutorial in which we will create this photo storage box using the papers from the Midnight Masquerade collection by Graphic45. As you can see, I've used some cutouts from this paper uh, on the front of the box and also used this uh, mask die to match the theme of the paper. Um, on the sides I've used some metal pools and you can uh, transport um, and uh, carry the box by holding to the poles. Um, the box measures about 7 inches by 4 and 3 quarters and the bottom section uh, is about 3 inches in depth. Um, on the back of the box um, we have here a little pocket for uh, two tags inside and uh, the box is closed using the elastic string and this metal pool here serves as a holder um, and um, as a holder of the closure. So when you open the box you have the accordion uh, pockets. Um, they are not really pockets because they are not closed all the way to the bottom uh, so they are more like separators and this is how it looks from the side. Uh, you can store uh, four by six uh, inches photos inside the box and um, I currently have a few uh, ephemera cards uh, from the paper collection uh, Midnight Masquerade here and their size is exactly 4 inches by 6 so they fit easily inside the box in each one of the separators you can put uh, more than one picture obviously or if you plan to uh, create this project and um, give it away as a present to someone you can um, actually create um, a few uh, photo mats and um, a person to whom the box will be presented already will add uh, the pictures of his own uh, so um, that's a quick overview of what we will be creating today I hope you like it and if you do please uh, watch the tutorial and we will create this box together Right. Before we begin the process of construction, let's see that we have all the necessary details um, and parts ready. So the um, inner top flap is going to measure seven and one eighth of an inch by two and a quarter. The back panel should be seven and one eighth by four and five eighths of an inch. The bottom is seven by three inches. The front panel will be seven and one eighth by two and three quarters, and the outer top flap will be seven and one eighth by one and a half. Now the side panels, the uh, chipboard pieces that you will cut will measure three inches by four and five eighths, and then you will need to cut um, uh, sections uh, here from the sides at an angle and um, you will make a mark on this piece on the left piece you will make a mark from the left top corner um, up to the mark of two and one quarter of an inch and all this section will have to be cut off and on the left piece you will do the same um, the mark will also be at two and one quarter of an inch but it will stand from the top right corner of the chipboard piece and then all this section will also need to be cut off. This is something that I will do right now and we will continue. Here we go. This is how the side panels should look like. And they will be connected to the bottom like that. So when you uh, fold everything and can start to construct the box from the side, they will look like this. Okay, this is how everything will look like. Um, now we will need uh, some hinges. Um, currently I have here, let's see, six hinges and these measure one inch by 12. Uh, I've prepared six currently. I think it will be enough, but let's see um, um, as we go, uh, maybe we will need to add some more. So as you can see what I did was um, after cutting the strips of cardstock um, of the um, 
of the size that I stated, 1 inch by 12. I scored them in the middle and I applied the uh, double sided score tape to both of the flaps and trying not to cover the score line. So this is what you should do as well. And uh, the process of construction will begin from connecting the side uh, panels to the bottom uh, piece of the chipboard. The first two hinges that you will need for that uh, will have to measure three inches and we will connect them here at the side. So cut two hinges um, measuring three inches by one and we continue. I suggest that uh, once you have your hinges ready, uh, you will cut uh, the corners here a little bit at an angle, like that, on both of them. Like that, and now we can Oops, okay. Um, use your bone folder in order to um, reinforce the score lines of the hinges. Now take one of them, remove the backing from one half, and attach the hinge to the side of the bottom chipboard piece so that you will not overlap the score line. Okay, if you can see, we still have a straight angle here and the score line, I'm not sure if you can see, but the score line is just um, go, going just along the edge of the chipboard and the chipboard is not covering it. Let's do the same from the other side. exactly the same thing like that okay now let's burnish okay and then comes a little bit tricky part uh, you will take the side panel piece you will remove the backing from the score tape and you will apply a little bit of wet glue to the very edge to the very edge of the chipboard piece um, to the side which will be inside of the box and not outside of it okay like that I hope you can see and now you keep it in a standing position all the way down to the bottom and you kind of push it towards the uh, bottom piece and while you do that you lift the hinge with your other hand and burnish okay this is what you will do um, it would be nice if you could leave this piece for a while to dry and only then continue doing the same from the other side since I'm here uh, a little bit pressed for time I will do it now so the same thing you remove the backing from the score tape and you apply a little bit of glue to the very very edge here at the bottom of the side panel you keep it in a standing position all the way down to the surface and attach it to the side of the bottom piece and you burnish the hinge and lift it okay so now this piece should be left to dry for a while before we continue pair two additional hinges which will uh, measure four and five eighths of an inch by one inch you will also reinforce them uh, reinforce the score line using your bone folder and then you will cut the 
making goes like that just a little bit okay and one more hinge that we will need will measure seven and one eighth of an inch we'll do the same thing to this hinge as well now you will take the one which measures four and five eighths of an inch you will remove the backing from one half of it and you will attach it to the side panel um, from this side which is not angled in the very same way so that the score line will be seen and the chipboard piece will not overlap it like that be careful when you do that because this piece that we are working on is currently very um, fragile and we don't want it to fall apart okay so you attached the hinge now only from one side and that's okay you will remove the backing from the second half of the hinge and you will take your back panel okay now we will apply the wet glue to the very edge of it here like this and I hope you will be able to see what I will do now is this I will attach it all the way down to the surface and I will align it according to this panel and the bottom um, section of um, the box that I'm constructing okay I will keep it in that position standing and I will lift the second half of the hinge be very gentle now because this piece is not reinforced and we need to be very patient when we work on it great okay now let's make sure that uh, at this stage all the lines are straight and you have a perfect corner here if you have it then everything is okay and we can continue all right we will need to build another perfect corner to make sure that all the parts meet and everything is correct and we will attach one more hinge to this side in the very same way like we did here except for we will try to do that while the whole piece is standing like that so I will remove the backing from the uh, from half of the hinge first and I will try without overlapping the score line I will attach it here burnish like that now I will remove the backing from the second half I will take my glue and apply a little amount of glue to the very edge of the chipboard piece of the back panel here okay like that great now I have to make sure that the chipboard piece is inside and that it's all the way up to the working surface and then I will close the hinge here so if you will look at the piece that you are working with right now you will see that let me try to focus it okay I hope you can see that that the bottom uh, the back panel is kind of covering 
the side panel from both sides. If this is what you have, you are on the right track and you can continue. Okay, so um, the next thing to do is the following. You will take that uh, 7 and 1 8 of an inch hinge, you will remove the backing from one half and you will apply it to the bottom of the back um, section here like that okay I don't know why is it called the little ah okay this is something else just a second don't pay attention at what is written here this is a note from uh, the previous project okay this is the correct name of the um, piece that we are working with it's a back panel and there are the measurements okay so the hinge is applied and one half of it is already glued down to the back panel of the box I will now take the glue and I will try to add it here maybe not all the way but I will try to add it to the bottom uh, of the chipboard piece which is the back panel of our box and now when I'm pressing with my left hand on this piece I will use my other hand, my right hand, in order to lift the second half of the hinge and burnish it in the following way. Okay, now this is the piece with, that we have. All the corners here are straight and aligned and everything looks good so far. Next we will attach the inner top flap and I want to rectify a little mistake here. The uh, measurements for the inner top flap are 7 inches by 2 and a quarter and not 7 and 1 eighth as I stated in the beginning of the tutorial. Um, anyway, I will post the uh, guide with all the measurements in the post on my blog. So. Uh, the link to it will appear in the description box down below. So if you are a little bit um, lost in the measurements, you can go to my blog and check the um, correct measurements there. Anyway, we are uh, keeping on uh, assembling the box and uh, currently we will take another hinge uh, which measures uh, 7 and 1 8 by 1 inch and I will apply this hinge to this um, section here like that um, okay let's remove the backing from one half of the hinge and I'm holding this whole uh, box as you can see in my hand and I will apply it I will stick it down to the hinge once again making sure that I'm not overlapping the a square line on the uh, cardstock hinge there okay like that after you placed that uh, top hinge to the back panel uh, you can see that all the rest of the hinges are already there and at this stage you will have to decide what kind of paper you will be using for embellishing your box uh, I'm going to use the paper from the Midnight Masquerade Collection by Graphic 45 and I already cut one piece uh, down to the size that I need in order to cover the back panel. We're going to cover it now because for the closure I will be placing an eyelet here on top um, of the uh, back uh, panel of the box in the top section and if I already add the inner top flap I will not be able to reach this area here with the crocodile. So I'm going to do it now. I will glue down the designer paper piece and this uh, measures um, in my case seven inches by four and a half. I will glue it down now ok 
I want to leave a tiny border from all the four sides of the back panel and we'll burnish from the inside of the box to make sure it sticks good okay like that and now I will have to find um, the middle okay it will be well I'm just eyeballing it from the top and the middle here will be uh, apparently at three and a half inches so somewhere about a half an inch from the top I will uh, make I will punch a hole using my crocodile Okay, half an inch like that mm. and let's no it should be more because we have a little bit of the thickness of the chipboard so I will place the stopper here at three quarters of an inch and now I can Oops. Now I can get there. All right. Now we have it, and I will add the eyelet. All right. Now we can continue. So, and now we will work on uh, attaching the inner top flap to the rest of our box. What I'm doing now is I'm applying the glue to the um, very edges of that inner top flap. And I'm working with tacky glue. You can work with uh, glossy accents too, although it dries quite fast. So, if you are um afraid that you um will not be able to stick it down to the correct place you should work with techie as well okay so now what i'm doing i'm attaching the uh, inside i'm attaching the inner top flap to the inside of the box making sure that the sides are flush one with another and I think I will start from this section here. I will just make sure that this panel reaches the top edge of the back panel. And once I'm sure that I have it, I'm holding it with my hand and I will lift the part of the hinge that I have from the right hand side and I will stick it down okay now I will just press with my fingers a little bit in order to uh, level it and glue it down from the sides and in a second I will show you to which result we are striving for Okay, we need it to look like that. Here it's um, and this, here it's flush, and here this corner is flush too with the side panel. Okay, this is how it should look. Now we uh, prepare uh, next two hinges, and these measure uh, two and a quarter of an inch by one inch. They have the score tape at the back side so I will remove the backing currently from both halves and making sure that I hold it at a straight angle I will attach this hinge here on top like this Okay, and I will burnish 
and the same thing from the other side. Um, if you pay attention, I'm starting from the um, from this side where I still don't have any hinges just to make sure that I cover the chipboard here because I don't want any areas with the natural color uh, chipboard to show too much. If I have something which shows like for example here I will just use my Copic marker or you can use the Sharpie marker or any um, other black marker that you like in order to color in those uh, really tiny areas uh, of the chipboard which show and just in case I will color already um, the corners here just to make sure that I have it all fixed Okay, like that. So the main section of the box is ready and now we will work on um, the outer top flap and the um, front panel of the box. So let's begin with the outer top flap. If you plan to round the uh, corners here like I will do, um, you will need a, a corner chomper and I will use the uh, half an inch um, circle okay I will jump it here and here okay like this so it will close that way and um, now I will need a piece of cardstock black cardstock which measures uh, eight and one eighth of an inch by two and five eighths of an inch and I have here guys a guideline which stands half an inch away from the bottom uh, section of the uh, cardstock so I will glue it down um, using the guideline I'm using my wet glue for doing that Okay, so gluing that down, now this section here will turn uh, to half of the hinge which will help us to attach the flap to the front panel of the box so it will look like that okay so I will take my scissors now and uh, at a little angle I will trim these sections like that okay the same from the other side and now I will cut the cut the corners here in order to um, repeat the uh, rounded shape of the corners of the chipboard okay it doesn't have to be perfect well something like that now I will make a few additional cuts in these areas close to the rounded corners as far as you can see and then here I will make another two cuts okay now let's see okay I will take the score tape and apply it to this area here and to the sides And also to this flap here in the following way okay 
Now we will wrap the flaps of the card dock around the chipboard piece and I will start with the long flap first like that I will also burnish here on the edge now I will apply no I will first let's okay let's wrap the little flaps here on the sides and burnish and here as well burnish all right now we are ready I will use my wet glue I will apply a little bit of it to these three flaps and I will start to wrap them in the side ones first and the middle one last Okay. You want to make sure that everything uh, glues down properly. If you want to kind of smooth, kind of a smooth corner, rounded corner, so just rub it on the surface like that, and then use the paper clip to hold it all together. Now let's do the same from the other side the side ones first and then the middle one okay like that and either using a bone folder or uh, once again rubbing the uh, corner uh, against the working surface make sure that this rounded edge is smooth okay and then use a paper clip once again to hold it all together for a while this flap is free for now we didn't attach anything to it and that's okay you just make wait for its turn i'm only burnishing it a little bit to make it crisp here all right, we need one, one more hinge, which is seven and one eighth of an inch in uh, length. And I will attach it to the uh, front panel uh, chipboard piece. Not overlapping the fold line, guys, as usual. Like this, and now We'll attach it to the base of the box so we'll remove the backing and attach it leaving I'm telling you I cannot even say okay we will close try to keep it kind of closed the front panel and I'm just placing the whole box on top of it take your time with this don't be in a rush okay here here we go because we want to leave just a little uh, spacing here in between the uh, bottom and the uh, front panel of the box okay like that now this flap is the next that we will take care of okay I think here it's already glued down I will remove the backing from the uh, hinge and I will attach it to the front panel so that it's flush 
flush with it, almost flush. We have a little spacing here, but it's not a big one. Okay, so this is how it will be. Now let's take care of um, these areas here that need to be covered with uh, additional hinges. And uh, we also need to reinforce the inside of the box. So let's maybe start with that, with the inside of the box. Uh, here I have two hinges, which I'm going to miter as well. And in a second I will tell you the measurements of these ones. They are four and four and three eighths of an inch in length. And I will remove the backing from both halves of the hinge. I will place it in the very corner there and we'll glue it down. Burnishing using my bone folder. The same thing from the other side. Now you can guess that we need another uh, two hinges which measure uh, slightly less than three inches for these places and two more hinges which measure slightly less than two and a quarter for um, those areas and one more which is seven inches in length for covering um, that section there so I will cut all the hinges now to the size here I have them all prepared so I can start attaching them in the very same way like we attached uh, these ones here on the sides the very same principle don't forget to burnish like this okay don't worry that it covers uh, just a little bit the uh, uh, opening from the eyelet it's not a problem we will poke a hole there anyway once we glue down the designer paper to the inside of the box okay so this is what we have so far uh, currently I ran out of all the hinges that I had and I remind you that I had six of them in the beginning of the uh, video so I think we will need to uh, prepare one two three um, about another five of them yeah five of them all right so we will start with two which are seven inches long and I will cover uh, this section here with one of them okay I will remove the backing I think I will start from one half I will place it like this without overlapping the score line. Okay. Like this. Now burnish. And wrap. Wrap around. burnish once again okay like that and um, okay now we will need two other hinges to cover the sides of the base uh, of the box here and these are uh, slightly larger than uh, four and a, uh, four and four and a half of an inch okay four and a half of an inch and once again just I want to make sure that I'm not overlapping the score line so I'm starting with one half of the hinge only you can add if you are not in a hurry this would be really nice if you add a little bit of wet glue here 
to the edge before you wrap it in because that way your edges will look completely perfect okay I'm just really in a hurry now so I will not do that or I will let's see how it goes <laughs> okay the same thing here like that and burnish and remove the backing add the glue and wrap it in neatly burnishing all the edges okay like this now that second hinge which was seven inches in length we will take in order to place it here in this area but let's do it not now first we will cover the edges of this uh, front panel here and um, they should be oh this one should be four inches by three and quarter three and a quarter okay that's why I told you just use the um, cutting guide on my blog it's always better because sometimes you see I'm I'm making mistakes um, okay so we will cut to hinges which are four and three quarters of an inch in length okay I will remove the backing from one half I will attach it without overlapping the fold line to this side of the front panel like that and I will burnish the same on the other side okay like that now I will remove the backing, add a little bit of the glue to the very edge of the chipboard and wrap in and burnish the edge. Same thing here. Okay. like that burnishing the edges okay now I will take that seven inch long hinge and I will apply it here in this area making sure that the fold of the hinge gets just inside the uh, spacing between the two uh, sections of the chipboard and then gently opening it and burnishing and going down okay like this so I'm just working on the flap here okay like that and we need one more uh, hinge for this part here I think it should also be mm, okay seven and one eighth of an inch here we go I'm folding it with the score tape facing outside removing the backing and placing it just inside the uh, spacing there between the two chipboard pieces and burnishing it all down like that okay okay this is how it goes you can see that it's a little bit higher than it could be 
so now that I'm thinking about it, we could make it slightly smaller. Let's see, maybe once again I will need to change the measurements. Okay, so this section here, in the guide I will uh, post it uh, with the correct measurements. So it needs to be 4 and 5 eighths of an inch by 7 and 1 eighth of an inch. Okay, so that way everything will look perfect. Um, anyway, I will be adding here a little bit more uh, of paper. And anyway, I have the uh, closure, the um, elastic string closure here, so it will be it will be fine. It will not open. Uh, but if you want it to look really, really perfect, use the measurements from the cutting guide that, once again, will be posted on my blog. Now comes the fun part. You will have to cover all the outside panels of your box with the designer paper of your choice. And then we continue. Once you are done embellishing the uh, outside of the box, of course, don't forget to put your metal embellishments if you plan to use them on your project. So this is what I did. I used here some uh, pulls and some filigree embellishments. And here I have uh, a little pull which will serve um, as a part of the closure. Um, and also that um, elastic string which will go through the eyelet and um, then it will hold the box closed together like this. Uh, so anyway, um, you have to mount all the metal pieces now before you cover all the inside panels uh, with the designer paper of your choice. And um, cover all of them except for the inside of the front panel and the inside of the back panel. So cover all these sections and this little flap here and then we will continue. Okay, now I have these sections covered with the designer paper and I was thinking that um, it might be not very good that we already covered the outside of the front panel with the designer paper because when we attach the um, the pockets, the inside pockets, um, I plan to use um, a few of the um, brads and they will show here from the front side so I will still be using that and I will already see how um, uh, how and what to do in order to cover them. So if you still haven't covered the uh, outside front panel with the designer paper, don't do that yet. Okay? Um, as usual, there is almost nothing in scrapbooking that you cannot fix or uh, cover with some other elements or other paper pieces. But still, if you first uh, watch the tutorial and only then um, um, do that, um, create the project, that's really good. Okay, so for the next step you will need a piece of the designer paper that will go to the inside of the back panel. And this is the paper that I will be using um, for the sake of the measurements. Okay, let's see, it's set, uh, 6 and 7 eighths of an inch by uh, 4 and 3 eighths of an inch. Uh, you will also need two uh, pieces of the designer paper of your choice which measure two inches by two and one eighth and you will score you will you will have two of these strips and each one of them you will score um, along um, the uh, whole length at every half an inch and then you will fold it in the accordion style like that you can see it's really easy to do the only now I'm pressing a little bit just to keep it um, to keep it more so to say closed okay now here we have uh, two parts so each one of the parts 
will be attached to uh, the sides of this paper piece and I will um, begin attaching it from this flap. I'm using wet glue for this step. Okay, I will attach it up to the fold line uh, here on the accordion itself and really flush with the bottom um, edge of the um, designer paper. We'll burnish now and I will do the same with the second flap uh, of the second strip. Okay, like that. Okay. It's moving a little bit because the glue is not dry yet. Okay. Here we go. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, now I can burnish. All right. And you will then need to cut 10 um, 10 strips of paper. Once again, this will be the paper of your choice. Uh, it's better for this paper to be uh, non-directional. I really wanted to use this side of the paper, but as you can see here, it has um, pictures which um, for which the direction is important. But um, I thought that I will be attaching them um, the way that this um, side of the paper will be less seen. So this is currently less important, but it's better to use the paper, uh, once again, which is non-directional. Okay, so these 10 pieces will measure 6 and 7 eighths of an inch by 2 and 1 eighth of an inch. And what you will do, that, what you will do th with them is this. You will fold from this side one flap and from this side one flap. Okay, we'll hold it here like that. And you will apply glue to each side of these flaps and you will attach this paper piece once again up to the fold line and flush with the bottom edge. Okay, so you will do this from the left side and from the right side in the same manner. Each time burnishing and making sure that everything stays in place, then you continue doing that. Every time you fold one flap, you apply the glue and you attach the next of paper up to the fold line. Try to keep the fold line free of any paper. Okay, now here the same thing. You fold and apply glue and glue the paper piece down. And in this way, you will need to glue down all the 10 pieces that you have here. When you will be done gluing all the uh, paper pieces to the uh, accordion flaps, uh, you will have uh, three flaps left from each side. And this is the time when you will need another piece of the designer paper. And, and this one will measure seven inches by four and five eighths. And you will take it, you will flip it to the um, to the side which will be glued down to the chipboard. Okay, so basically this is what we are creating right now. Um, you know what, let's do it differently. Let's first um, glue all of this um, element. Let's glue this element first to the inside of the box. Now we will flip the box like that. Ok, 
Okay, and I will hold all this piece by the paper strips. And now we will glue it down gently, pressing everywhere as good as I can in order to glue it down well, especially here on the sides. So since you almost cannot reach um, the areas there, I'm pressing on the top of the accordion flaps here. Okay. So do that too. All right. Now let's see. Okay. These can be pulled out. I like this. Okay. Like this, they can be pulled out. And this is what we need. I will burnish a little bit more here. On the inside, I'm sorry that you cannot see that. Okay, but this is how it goes. Alright, and now I will take that piece of paper and we will do the following all of it will work like that so now I will take the glue and I will apply a little amount on these flaps like that and with the correct uh, side of the paper facing down I will glue these accordion flaps to the paper piece okay like so and the same thing from the other side feel that a lot of pressure is applied here in this area so if we want our project to be more durable we will do the following we will glue this whole piece first and I think that now I We'll use the score tape on the edges and to the inside area I will add uh, the liquid glue. Okay, now we are ready to do that. And don't be in a rush when you do it. Okay, make sure that you leave a tiny border from the left and the right side and the top too and once you are sure that the paper is going to be glued down correctly you will start to burnish and burnish really good okay like this so this is what we have so far and now <clears throat> I will take two more of the uh, brads and I will also take the poking tool and let me poke the hole first and then I will show you where exactly that hole is I'm poking it about a quarter of an inch a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the chipboard the way that it will stay 
um, how to say that kind of in the if if I close the box that it will stay uh, behind this uh, side paper piece all right so here these are the tails we need to flatten them and for that reason because of these tails it would be better if uh, this uh, section here was still uncovered with the designer paper and uh, but anyway I did it that way so I will need to think about some creative way of embellishing the front side and covering the tails of those brads pay attention that I'm putting the bread in so that when I open the tails they will be parallel to the edge of the, the front panel of my box okay here we go now you remember that we placed the eyelet here but we currently don't have um, any hole from the inside of the box for uh, placing our um, elastic string closure so I will just use a, a poking tool once again in order to find that uh, hole here from the inside and place the elastic inside there by the way I didn't have the black color of the elastic string so I just took white and used my uh, Copic marker in order to color it but you can also use a uh, distress stain or distress ink anything of that kind would be okay and now I will put okay I will put the string inside that hole like that here we go we can already close it and look at the result that we have so far and uh, because basically the box is done and what is left to do is to embellish the front according to your liking and um, inside the box you can store the four by six inches pictures um, either mounted on um, on the photo mats of a um, little a little bit larger uh, size than the photo itself or you can just put the pictures here in the pockets um, as they are and to store them that way um, I will stop the tutorial here because I think that each one of you will embellish the box in um, in a different way and uh, the result that I will get you will be able to see uh, in the post on my blog and also in the beginning of this uh, video so thank you very much for watching and joining me today I hope you enjoyed uh, if you have any questions please uh, ask them in the comments below um, I try to get back to everyone thank you and bye bye